After dropping for two weeks, new infections are ticking up again. And it's a real race to see whether the vaccines will take hold before the new variants take us out. Which is why, even as we enter the home stretch, it's important, people, to mask up and keep out of crowds and not do whatever this is. There is a lot of concern this morning that some states are rushing to open too soon. Defying the CDC, the governors in Texas and Mississippi declaring they're back in business, eliminating mask mandates and allowing all retailers to open at 100% capacity. States like Massachusetts, Pennsylvania and Kentucky also easing restrictions, allowing larger crowds in smaller venues. Restaurants, high school proms, even Las Vegas pool parties are set to reopen with fewer mandates. Wedding receptions now, they can return in New York in just a few weeks, but there's going to be some rules as to how you hit the dance floor. New York State promising to enforce dance zones when wedding receptions resume on March 15th. Under the rules, each dance zone is supposed to be a minimum of 36 square feet. Guests can share a dance zone only with other people from their table and members of their household or family. Hold up, hold up, hold up. So if you go to a wedding in New York, you can only dance with your own family in your own dance zone? That is a terrible idea. And I would hate to be the wedding DJ who has to enforce that rule and try and keep things fun. All right, take it back now, y'all. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, slide to the right. Yeah, yeah, too far, too far. Slide to the left, I'll light your asses up. Slide to the left, stay in your zone. Oh, yeah. So look, man, this is a weird rule, but at least it looks like Governor Cuomo has finally learned the importance of social distancing at weddings. But here's the real question for me. Why are things reopening all of a sudden? Corona's not over yet. I mean, Texas is still getting over 7,000 new cases a day, but their governor got vaccinated, and now he's like, get those clubs back open, I'm gonna get lit, oh, yeah. And I can even understand wanting to open businesses back up because of the economy. But people, lifting mask mandates? That makes no sense at all, no sense. Like, I'm sick of corona too, but this is not the time to ease up on masking. We're so close to the end of the pandemic, we can see it. Why are these governors letting their guard down? I bet these are the same people who read tortoise in the hair and they're like, what a great story about a rabbit who took a refreshing nap. But let's move on to the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Oh, I'm sorry. You think Joe Biden was inaugurated in January, sheeple? Well, maybe you've been reading the wrong internet message boards and you're gonna find out the truth tomorrow. The FBI is warning of extremist chatter and specifically that there could be another attack on the U.S. Capitol tomorrow. QAnon followers are at it again. They have grasped on to another impossible theory. Trump will take office as the 19th president of the United States on March 4th. They believe in an old inauguration date in place before the passage of the 20th Amendment. It changed from March 4th to January 20th, only in 1933. The Trump Hotel has nearly tripled its rates, with rooms now going for about $1,300 a night, both today and for tomorrow. Oh, man, what a grift. Honestly, I don't even blame Trump. If I was him, I would milk the shit out of this thing. I'd be charging my guests for things that they didn't even buy. Wait a minute, I never bought the Toblerone? I guess the Dems stole that too. I feel your pain. And these QAnon people have no one to blame but themselves at this point. I mean, they've been proven wrong time and time and time again, but they just keep moving Trump's inauguration day a little further back. In a way, I understand. I mean, the deeper you fall into something, the less you wanna admit that you were duped, you know? Which makes you even more desperate to keep the fantasy going. I mean, that's why I'm sure that the next Kanye album is gonna be great again. It has to be great. In the meantime, though, it looks like Washington will have to prepare for more riots. I mean, they might just end up becoming part of the DC tour guide experience. All right, guys, you just missed the two o'clock insurrection at the Capitol, but the 4.30 p.m. will be happening shortly, so stick around. And please remember, do not feed the Capitol rioters, okay? And finally, Amazon the only place you can get a monthly subscription of refrigerators. We all use Amazon every day. Well, I mean, 
except me. I only shop at my local independent bookstore. So important. But people who do use Amazon might have noticed something a little different the last time they went to open the app on their phone. Amazon has changed its new app logo after critics claimed it resembled Hitler's facial features. At issue was the blue tape above the smiling arrow. Critics said the icon looked like Hitler's mustache. The company has now tweaked the image so the tape is folded, not rigid. Wow. First, Dr. Seuss, and now Adolf Hitler. Cancel culture is getting out of control. Come on, people. This was obviously an innocent mistake. You should give Amazon's graphic designer a break because he's probably not allowed one on his shift. And to be fair to Amazon, everything looks like Hitler. I mean, there are cats that look like Hitler, fish that look like Hitler, houses that look like Hitler. There was this super old guy I met in Argentina last year who looked a lot like Hitler. Like he, oh, wait a second. I mean, if we're gonna go after app logos that make you uncomfortable, well then you know who we should be going after? Instagram. Yeah, because every time I tap it, I feel like I'm sticking my finger in a robot's butthole. Oh, you tell me you've never noticed that. Tell me you've never noticed the same thing. 